Now let us discuss how to find the future value of annuity. Future value of annuity means the worth of periodical cash flows at a particular time in the future or it is the value of regular cash flows at a date in the future. For example, a person is receiving 1000 rupees at the end of every year continuously for 10 years. At the end of first year, he is receiving 1000 rupees. At the end of second year, another 1000. At the end of third year, again 1000. Like that, every year he is receiving 1000 for 10 years. Now, here we are going to study what is the value of these cash flows at the end of the 10th year. 1000 is received in the first year, second year, third year, like that. So we have already studied in the previous video that 1000 received in the first year is not the same as 1000 received at the end of the 10th year. Hence, we are going to study how to find what is the value of all these cash flows at the end of 10th year. That is called the future value of annuity. Now let us check out the formula to find the future value of an annuity. The cash flows may be paid or received at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year. In both these cases, the formula will be slightly different. First of all, let us see what is the formula to find the future value of an annuity if the cash flows are coming at the end of the year. Fb is equal to A divided by I into 1 plus I raised to N minus 1. Now let us check out what is the change in the formula when the cash flows are received or paid at the beginning of the year. Then the formula will be Fb is equal to A divided by I into 1 plus I raised to N minus 1 into 1 plus I. This 1 plus I is included in the formula when the cash flows are coming in the beginning of the year. Now, here FV is the future value. A is the value of individual payments. I is the interest rate. N is the number of periods. In normal cases, the situation will be that cash flows are coming at the end of the year. So, if nothing is mentioned in the question, that means the cash flows are received at the end of the year. Year. Now let us take an example. Mr. Y deposits at the end of every year rupees 1000 in a bank which pays 12 percentage compound interest per annum for 8 years. What will be the total amount standing to his credit at the end of the 8th year? So, what all things are given in the question? Every year, that person is depositing 1000. So A is 1000, N is given 8 years, I is 12 percentage per annum. So 0 0.12. And it is given in the question that Mr. Y is depositing at the end of every year. So the formula to be used is FB is equal to A by I into 1 plus I raised to N minus 1. That is 1000 divided by 0 0.12 into 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to 8 minus 1. So the answer is 12,300 rupees. That means when that person is depositing 1,000 rupees in the bank every year for 8 years, actually the amount deposited by him is 8,000 rupees only. But at the end of 8th year, there is 12,300 rupees in his account. This is because of the effect of compounding. And we have already studied that 1,000 received in the first year is not the same as 1,000 received at the end of the 8th year. Hence, even though he is depositing 8,000 rupees, he is getting... 12,300 rupees at the end of the 
eight years. Now let us take another example. A person desires to pay back his debt of rupees twelve thousand six hundred and ten due after three years by three equal installments payable at the end of each year. Find the amount of each installment, money being worth five percentage per annum, compound interest. So it is given in the question that. This twelve thousand six hundred and ten will be due after three years. That means this is the future value. Hence, F V is equal to twelve thousand six hundred and ten, and in this three years, he is desiring to pay back this amount in three years, and the interest rate is five percentage per annum. Hence, it is zero point zero five. Now. It is given that he is paying at the end of each year. So the formula to be used is this, and let us apply these values in the formula. Twelve thousand six hundred and ten is equal to a divided by zero point zero five into one plus zero point zero five raised to three minus one. So here a is to be found out. Every year, what is to be given? That is not given in the question. So we have to find a. When we compute it, we get a as six thirty point five divided by zero point one five seven six. That is four thousand rupees. So every year he has to pay four thousand rupees for the next three years. So that after three years. The value will be twelve thousand six hundred and ten. Now let us take another problem. Find the total amount of annuity of rupees five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven per year, payable for twelve years at five percentage per annum compound interest. If the annuity is paid at the beginning of the year, so. Here, the formula to be used is different. Annuity is paid at the beginning of the year, and what other things are given in the question? Every year, the amount paid is five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven. So A is five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven. N is twelve. I is five percentage. That will be zero point zero five. So the formula to be applied is this one because. Annuity is paid at the beginning of the year. Applying the values in the formula, we get it as F V is equal to five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven divided by zero point zero five into one plus zero point zero five raised to twelve minus one into one plus zero point zero five. So, when we solve it, we get the answer as. Ninety-nine thousand seven hundred and forty-four. That means if that person is paying five thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven every year at the beginning of the year for twelve years at five percentage per annum compound interest, then at the end of twelfth year, the future value will be ninety-nine thousand seven hundred and forty-four rupees. That is how we calculate the future value of an annuity. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, you can subscribe the channel.